I'm Dr. Mittelmetter. I head up the Neuropharmacology Group in the Department of Neuroimaging, which is part of the Institute of Psychiatry in King's College in London. The Paired Associates Learning Task in CANTAB is a very interesting task. It's potentially very sensitive to the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, and it might be a useful target to test novel treatments. But why is it useful and what does it measure? Well, the task requires you to look at pictures that appear in boxes on the screen. So imagine you see two boxes on the screen. They open one by one, and inside is a picture. They close again, and you're shown the pictures again, and you have to remember where they were on the screen. Okay. Now, you might imagine that's quite easy. You'll get it right. Well, if you do, the task becomes a bit harder, and there'll be more boxes. Eventually, if your memory is good, you might go all the way up to eight boxes. But what happens if you get it wrong? Well, then you get another go, and you get a chance to learn where the boxes are. Now, patients who seem to be at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, or might be in the very early stages of Alzheimer's disease, find this task particularly difficult, and their performance seems to get worse over time. But what specifically is impaired is more difficult to ascertain. That's because the test measures more than one thing and you can be impaired for more than one reason. Now with many tests, there's an attentional component. Okay, but let's imagine that the person in question can do the test and is paying attention. What else could go wrong? Well, the test loads heavily on working memory. Now working memory requires you to hold information online for future action, which might only be a number of seconds away. So once you've seen these pictures in the box, if you're rehearsing them in your head, then having to recall them, then this will be using your working memory. But also be using episodic memory. The idea that the locations will be familiar to you, or that you'll learn them over time. And it's this episodic memory and this learning component that we think is sensitive to the brain areas which seem to degenerate early in the course of Alzheimer's disease. If we could show specifically that it was those learning components that were causing the difficulties in this patients, then we could try and link that to the brain dysfunction and understand better why this task might be sensitive to the early stages of this devastating disease. The end. What do you think, Shibley?